Hey, it's Mark Lanier with your video thought for the day. All right, so this morning I put on my Commander Cody shirt that my buddy Dale got me. Now, Dale is um, an unusual fellow when it comes to his taste in TV shows. And he got me watching on YouTube these campy little shows about Commander Cody. And yeah, you can watch them and then get upset with Dale for wasting your time also. But they really are kind of funny and entertaining. And whenever I think about Dale, I also think about the Book of Ruth. Weird connection, but Dale loves the Book of Ruth. And so I thought I might not only wear the Dale shirt today, but I thought I might talk for a moment about a couple of interesting aspects of the book of Ruth. The book of Ruth is an Old Testament book. It's, it's short, it's four chapters. And it, it tells some amazing story, um, but it does it in a way that, that is built around food. And this is the week after Thanksgiving, but we're looking forward to Christmas and Hanukkah, which are around the corner. This is the time of feasting. So during the feast days, obviously we're eating feast. Uh, during the other days, we're eating tuna and crackers, trying to get ready for the feast day. But I read the book of Ruth and food jumps out at you all over the place. So why don't we just take a couple of days and talk about the food in Ruth? And now the Ruth story starts out with a, 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 a woman who's married, and she has two sons. And, and the, the plot line sets up that they live in Bethlehem. Now, Bethlehem is a compound word in the Hebrew, Beit Lechem. Beit means house. Lechem means bread. So Bethlehem literally means the house of bread. So you've got a storyline that starts out with this uh, uh, woman and her husband and her two sons who are living in the house of bread. And yet, there's a famine at the house of bread. So Bethlehem's in famine mode. There's not any grain. There's not any wheat. And, and so those living in the house of bread are without food. So the man and his wife and the two sons, they up and move over to Moab. Now, Moab, the Moabites are the enemies of the, the Israelites. And so that they're even moving over there is, is not something that, that you would think is a riveting good part of the story. But the irony is, while Bethlehem, the house of bread, is empty, in Israel, Israel's enemies' fields are full. And so the fields of Moab are full and, and uh, the man and his wife and the boys grow up. The boys marry Moabite daughters, or I mean women, and, and their life takes on fruitfulness there. Now, I wanna pause just right here and get our video thought for the day. Because here it is, you and I may be living our best life and we may come across a time where even within God's will, things seem barren and stark and we get called to go out into fields that we would never have contemplated going out into before. And God will minister to us there and he will supply us there and he will take care of us there. Now, that doesn't mean that we're always moving, but it does mean that God's always got a plan to take care of you and to take care of me. And the times may be rough and the famine may be present and you may be starving, but God's got a plan for you if you will look for it and you will follow him. And it might be one of the most unusual from left field plans you ever could have thought. But he's got one. And that's just one of the many lessons about food that we're going to see in Ruth as we finish out this week. But that is, can I say food for thought? 
Well, that's at least your video thought for the day. Blessings. We'll talk more food in Ruth tomorrow.